Nestled in a remote corner of the German landscape, imposing mountains reveal an enigma throughout history. This majestic setting served as the backdrop for the darkest acts of the Nazi war machine, an alpine fortress that rose like a monument to architectural grandeur and, simultaneously, as the epicenter of the most sinister plans. Under the shadow of its exceptional presence, a network of winding roads unfolds, carving deep grooves into cliffs, defying the laws of engineering and leading to the mountaintop. This megastructure, designed to dazzle not only the Fuhrer but the entire world, became a lair that witnessed the most sinister designs of the Third Reich and, even today, evokes a sinister shadow in collective memory. This network of roads, boasting the title of Germany's highest road, is just the prelude to a monumental structure, the Eagle's Nest. Prepare for a journey to Europe's most famous Alpine range, where the Third Reich devised its most sinister actions and plans. Welcome once again to military history. In the pages of history, few figures have left as dark and devastating a mark as Adolf Hitler, the architect of the Third Reich and undisputed leader of the Nazi party. Born on April 20th, 1889, in Braunau am Inn, Austria, Hitler rose to power in Germany in 1933, marking the beginning of an era that would plunge the world into chaos and tragedy. As a charismatic and manipulative orator, he channeled the discontent of post-war Germany to build a radical political movement. His ideology, rooted in racial supremacy and anti-Semitism, found resonance among the desperate and disillusioned masses. With the promise of restoring Germany's greatness, Hitler consolidated his rule and dubbed himself the Führer. Under his leadership, the Third Reich implemented draconian policies that culminated in the Holocaust and World War II. The systematic persecution of minorities, the genocide of millions of Jews, and aggressive military expansion defined his regime. The Nazi war machine, with the SS and Gestapo at the forefront, sowed terror and destruction across Europe. Hitler's distorted vision of Aryan superiority and territorial expansion led the world to the brink. His relentless military strategy and infallible propaganda machinery earned him control over vast territories, but at an unimaginable human cost. This historical figure, among other eccentricities, was very particular about the residences he inhabited. That's why the Führer, also known as the Nazi Imperial Eagle, believed he needed a dwelling befitting his exceptional and powerful figure. In the imposing majesty of the Bavarian Alps, amidst the green valleys and impressive peaks, there still stands today a historical monument that carries whispers of the past, the Eagle's Nest. It is a construction that merges architectural grandeur with the shadowy legacy of the Third Reich. This emblem of the Nazi era, known in its native language as Kelsteinhaus, is part of a fascinating and sinister legacy unfolding among the lofty mountains of Bavaria. The conception of this exceptional enclave emerged from the imagination of Martin Bormann, personal secretary to Adolf Hitler, who fantasized about a special retreat for the leader on his 50th birthday. Before we delve into the imposing eagle's nest, Let's see who was the mastermind behind this titanic feat. Within the ranks of the Nazis, Martin Bormann was an enigmatic figure, a shadow who operated behind the scenes, intricately weaving the threads of authority. Born on June 17, 1900 in Halberstadt, Germany, Bormann would become one of the key architects of the National Socialist government. With an early affiliation with the Nazi party and unwavering loyalty to the Führer, Bormann quickly rose through the ranks of the organization. His political cunning and ability to organize and centralize power earned him the position of Hitler's private assistant in 1943, consolidating his influence over the Third Reich machinery. Bormann, known for his fanatical loyalty, implemented ruthless anti-Semitic policies during his time in power. His role in organizing the final solution and channeling resources to concentration camps directly link him to some of the most atrocious crimes of the Holocaust. This fervent Nazi secretary 
was the one who determined that his Fuhrer deserved a luxurious house atop an unreachable mountain, much like a sumptuous nest for a majestic eagle. Ernst Udet, a prominent aviator of the Luftwaffe, pointed out the ideal location in the Obersalzberg, already home to the Berghof, Hitler's main residence at that time. It wasn't just a geographical choice, it was a propaganda act to project the greatness of the Fuhrer at the highest point. That was Bormann's vision of his political leader. The start of construction in 1937 marked the beginning of an unparalleled architectural feat. The Eagle's Nest, beyond being a simple refuge or dwelling, was a declaration of power and dominance. The minimalist design and the main room clad in wood offered a blend of elegance and simplicity, while the elevator, a technical marvel of that time, took visitors on a vertical journey through the mountain. However, this construction was much more laborious and challenging than anticipated, but the secretary was determined to provide his leader with a dignified home. Foreman was captivated by the complexity of the project. Everything had to be done, from creating roads to access the base and drilling into the mountain, to transporting materials for the construction of the house to the summit. Time was of the essence, and it seemed impossible for the work to be completed before Hitler's birthday. However, construction was completed punctually, although the cost was high, not only in economic terms. At least 12 workers lost their lives in the process, as historical records point. Under Bormann's direction, it was ordered to work around the clock in continuous shifts, with poor lights illuminating the nighttime tasks. The construction involved the creation and paving of a route of more than six kilometers, carving into the mountain, chiseling the stone and leveling seemingly impenetrable terrain. It also required improving the mountain trail leading to the house and installing an elevator so that Hitler could reach the summit. This was the most costly and dangerous part of the project, with the direct drilling of the mountain and the creation of a vertical tunnel for the elevator. To speed up the process, a cable car was implemented to transport materials to the summit. Hundreds of men were hired, who worked in conditions akin to slavery, enduring heavy loads and inhuman hours. Many of them were among the first Jewish prisoners who would later be destined for concentration camps. The total expenditure, adjusted to current values, is estimated to have exceeded $150 million. The spectacular cabin is situated on the peak of a hill at over 1,134 meters above sea level. The impressive elevator, which is mentioned, was a fascinating resource for the time, had a journey of 120 meters through the mountain. Months before the official inauguration, when the construction was halfway done, Bormann took Hitler on a visit to show him the progress. Despite the fact that the work was not yet complete and the complexity of the project made it difficult to visualize the final result, the Führer expressed his dissatisfaction with the property's location, not fully understanding the advantages of having the house at the highest point. Only the delusional explanations of his secretary about the greatness of his figure and his proximity to the sky gave meaning to the remote location of the dwelling. Access was not easy to say the least, almost impossible. One option was a nearly three hour hike up the mountain. Another alternative was to drive to the base then take transportation to near the eagle's nest and finally walk for about 20 minutes. There was also the possibility of ascending via the luxurious elevator embedded in the mountain to reach the residence, but that was reserved only for the Fuhrer and high-ranking Nazis. Despite its splendor, the eagle's nest was used sporadically, as Hitler preferred the proximity of his main residence, which historians say was the place the Fuhrer loved most in the world. El Berkov se convertiría en una mansión inmensa con techos abovedados y amplias escaleras. Un comedor, una biblioteca, un gran salón y una terraza en altura. 
In the same tranquil mountainous region of the Bavarian Alps, majestically stood the Berghof, Adolf Hitler's cherished mountain residence. This impressive property became the private retreat of the Nazi leader for much of his regime. Originally built as a modest country house in the 1920s, the Berghof grew into monumental proportions under the direction of Hitler's trusted architect, Albert Speer, and interior designer, Gerdy Trost. In his eagerness to expand the residence, the Führer, once again demonstrating his lack of judgment and humility, decided to personally take charge of the plans and renovations. Speer himself provided him with all the necessary tools, from drafting tables to pencils and rulers. Interestingly, Adolf Hitler had no knowledge of architecture, so this attitude was an explicit display of his egomania. Sentimentally attached to the Berghof, the Chancellor chose to preserve it and add new constructions to it. However, this peculiar architectural approach required the intervention of professionals to correct the beginner's mistakes, to be generous without arousing the anger of its original author. Hitler believed that this mountain house provided him with inner peace and stimulated his thinking, being the place where he conceived some of his most influential speeches. The expansion of the Berghof was not limited to enlarging the house. It was part of the Obersalzberg project. Martin Bormann, noticing Hitler's preference for the location, initiated an ambitious acquisition of surrounding properties. He bought neighboring houses and land. While some owners voluntarily surrendered their properties, others were coerced through threats. There were also inhabitants who were expropriated, and a few were displaced from their homes without any compensation. Bormann, on behalf of the German state, consolidated ownership of the entire area creating an immense complex around the Berghof that would play a fundamental role in the years to come. Bormann, Albert Speer, and Hermann Göring, among other high-ranking leaders of the Reich, played prominent roles in constructing their residences near the Führer's mountain retreat. In this picturesque and mountainous environment, they held high-level meetings and cabinet sessions the landscape was radically transformed with the emergence of luxury hotels, dormitories for workers and soldiers, restaurants, government offices, and housing for the growing number of employees. Obersalzberg became a new epicenter of power, where the Eagle's Nest stood out as the jewel of this settlement, and the Berghof served as Hitler's spiritual refuge. Surrounded by lush forests and majestic mountains, the Berghof eventually transformed into an extensive complex with numerous buildings and amenities. The main residence featured opulent halls, libraries, and lounges, all designed to reflect Hitler's personal taste. The windows offered panoramic views of the Alps, while the well-maintained gardens and courtyards provided a peaceful environment for the Nazi leader and his high-ranking visitors. The Berghof became the setting for crucial meetings and decisions for the Third Reich. From war strategies to the most gruesome horrors of the Holocaust, Everything was designed almost exclusively in this tranquil and luxurious residence. Political leaders and foreign dignitaries, as well as prominent figures in the Nazi hierarchy, frequented this power enclave. The extensive areas around the property were also used for ceremonies and parades, emphasizing Hitler's connection to nature and the symbolism he sought to project. The architecture of the Berghof, uniquely integrated with the surrounding landscape, combining grandeur with discretion. This duality reflected the image Hitler wished to project, a leader rooted in German tradition, but also destined to change history with his impressive greatness. Clear signs of grandiose egotism, the Alpine retreat became a symbol of Hitler's private life, where he spent time with Eva Braun and also entertained influential visitors. Although the Berghof was destroyed at the end of World War II by the Allied forces, the site remains a somber reminder of the days when this mountainous landscape was the epicenter of decisions that terrifyingly affected the entire world. Just as Albert Speer was the mastermind behind the Berghof, the Eagle's Nest had its own creator. We're talking about Hermann Giesler, a fanatical Nazi-supporting architect. Born on August 26, 1898, in Siegen, he became a key figure in the architectural sphere of the Third Reich. The architect, who served in World War I, joined the Nazi party early 
and stood out for his loyalty and creative skills. His association with Hitler intensified when, in 1933, he assumed the position of the Führer's Inspector of Construction. In this role, Giesler played a fundamental role in realizing architectural projects aimed at embodying the grandeur of the Nazi vision. One of Giesler's most ambitious projects was the transformation of Linz into a monumental cultural center. He proposed the creation of a Führer Forum that would include huge commemorative buildings and museums intended to glorify Germanic culture. Although many of these projects were never fully materialized due to the course of the war, they reflect the magnitude of the architectural aspirations of Nazism. Giesler was also involved in the planning of New Berlin, a utopian project aimed at transforming the German capital into a grand imperial city. His visionary designs included vast boulevards and colossal buildings intended to capture the greatness of the Reich. As the war progressed and German defeat became inevitable, many of Giesler's architectural dreams were reduced to mere pharaonic aspirations. After the war, he was arrested and faced trials for his involvement with the Nazi regime. He spent several years in prison, but unlike other Nazi leaders, he was not sentenced to life imprisonment. World War II barely left traces on the structure of the Eagle's Nest, but the end of the conflict brought a new narrative. In the hands of the Allied forces in 1945, the retreat became a scene of profound questions. The legend of this site intertwines with mystery. Were there secret tunnels that harbored dark escape passages, underground bunkers that safeguarded Nazi treasures, or even Hitler's own DNA? Conspiracies persist about hidden chambers and valuable objects that could be buried somewhere in the surroundings, or at the very center of the mountain itself. After decades, the Eagle's Nest has transformed into a tourist and historical destination. However, the shadows of the past have not completely disappeared. Myths and legends, fueled by intrigue and speculation, shed an ambiguous light on this monumental structure. Today, the sumptuous residence stands as a mountain museum, a silent witness to a turbulent era. Y ahora pasamos al ascensor. que está fabricado de bronce puro y provisto de banquetas forradas de cuero. Este es un lugar en el que no se ha escatimado en gastos, no se ha pasado por alto ni el más mínimo detalle. Its complex history and the duality between its architectural splendor and its connection to the Nazi regime add an intriguing nuance to this emblem in the heights of Bavaria. A reminder that even among the peaks, the secrets of the past persist, waiting to be unveiled in every corner of this imposing construction. Hermann Giesler's legacy is marked by his contribution to the architecture of the Nazi utopia, a somber testimony of how creative minds can be seduced to serve destructive agendas. His life and work illustrate the complexity and malleability of architecture as a means of political and cultural expression in the darkest moments of history. Martin Bormann, on the other hand, left an indelible mark on the Third Reich. His life, his rise to power, and his shadowy disappearance encapsulate a dark and disturbing part of the 20th century that even today continues to raise unanswered questions. As German defeat became inevitable in April 1945, Adolf Hitler chose his bunker in Berlin. His death marked the collapse of the Nazi regime and the end of World War II. Against all his wishes, he died away from the Eagle's Nest and his beloved Berghof the place where he would have intended to grow old as the leader of one of the most sinister and bloodthirsty empires in the entire history of humanity. We are reaching the end of this installment. We look forward to reading your valuable comments and appreciate your participation. We appreciate that you have reached the end 
and we look forward to seeing you in the next episodes of Military History.